Well, hello there, random person on the internet who's uh, hopefully not afraid of bats. But then again, why would you be afraid of bats? <laughs> Nothing scary about bats, right? Is it 2021 already? Oh, time really flies. <laughs> time really flies, what the f Okay, I think I have to address something here first. Um, I have about three to four weeks to write up my entire bachelor thesis. And uh, yeah, it's about this channel. Didn't start this way, but I quickly found out that I wouldn't have time for anything else if I want to continue the channel as it is. And my professor allowed it. So I'm gonna be spending the whole month of January writing this. And this video is pretty much just the last in the pipeline. Uh, I just want to show you the games and the deck don't have time to write an article or make some fancy edits and deck tech. Uh, yeah, just so you know, not the end of the channel. I'll address this later in this video. Just a heads up, less editing, still, just, still gameplay, I guess. Let's go. Okay, so today's deck is so chucked full of one drops that I had to split them in two rows here. Does that mean Brewer's Kitchen finally plays aggro? Ooh, yeah, well not really. I mean, I guess this deck goes hard in the early turns, but the real gimmick is almost every creature can return from the graveyard. And with Desecrated Tomb, every creature leaving the graveyard will create a bad token. Wait, wait, don't eat those. And then we can make use of it by sacrificing our little recursive critters for value and grind out the game if we didn't kill our opponent with our early aggro. And we obviously play the cat oven combo, but trust me, it's not half as obnoxious when someone edits out all the clicking and triggering, so you're welcome. And with the tomb on the battlefield, every time the cat makes its gruesome journey to the afterlife and back, we also get a bad token for it. And I don't have time to go over every card here, so just stop the video and read the cards if you don't know them. There are a bunch of niche cards from different sets here. So yeah, it's a pretty interesting concept. Let's see how it competes in some historic matches. Okay, game number one. And this is a pretty aggressive hand, so that's a keep. Opponent plays a Triome, passes back. We play a Swamp, play a Dread Ronra, pass back. Opponent, Breeding Pool and Thoughtseize, pretty bad against us, takes our Oven. We play a Castle, swing for two and play a Scrap Heap Scrounger. Opponent, plays another Triome and another Thoughtseize, takes our Scrounger. We draw a Familiar, swing for five, play a Castle, play a Familiar and pass the turn. Opponent Uro, life back up to 11, plays a land and passes the turn. Well, we play a land, swing for six and play a gutter bones, pass back. Opponent plays a planes, eliminates our scrounger. We sacrifice it to the tower. Pretty unnecessary here, just get it back right away. Opponent growth spiral and that is, well, GG, I guess. Yep, that's the GG. Pretty uninteresting game. Uh, I just wanted to show you that you win some games just by going aggro in the early turns. Not gonna show more of these games since it's pretty uninteresting content. Not hating on aggro players here, but this deck can do so much more. And with that said, let's get into the next game. <laughs> let's go, game number two here. And this hand looks sketchy, but we have a one drop and we basically have removal. Play the Stitcher Supplier, mill three cards, which is almost like drawing in this deck. And we mill a Scrap Heap Scrounger, so all good. Opponent Mountain Skirk Prospector, so goblins. You love to see it. We offer the trade, swing for one. They don't take it. Now we have to Spark Harvest this. I really hate these explosive Prospector starts, so sacrifice our Stitcher Supplier, mill three cards, and pass the turn. An opponent, a Wily Goblin, creates a treasure and passes back. We draw a Priest of the Forgotten Gods, play it and pass the turn. Opponent, land, Goblin Warchief, swings for two, we take it. Well, we draw a Gutter Bones, play a Desecrated Tomb and a Gutter Bones, set up for next turns, but let's see what our opponent does here. They play a land, they play a Chieftain and a Goblin Banneret, okay, and a Goblin Instigator. Wow, swing for 13. Now that's Goblins for you, we just have to take it. 
down to five. Now let's see what we can do here. We exile the Stitcher Supplier to get back Scrap Heap Scrounger and this will create two bats in the process since two creatures leave the graveyard. We sacrifice the Scrounger and a bat to the Priest. Opponent sacrifices a Goblin. We draw a card. It's a Shade. And we have to exile our Scrounger again to get two more bats since we really need the jump blockers here. Then we Spark Harvest uh, the Chieftain to power down their Goblins. The Scrappy Scrounger can't block anyway, so it's arguably better in our graveyard at this point. We got four blockers, opponent got four attackers. Let's see what they have. A land and another Chieftain. So it's jump block time. They pump up the Banneret, pump up the Chieftain and jump block and eat the Banneret. Well, 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 this is looking kind of grim. We are going down to three and let's see what we draw. We draw a Phyrexian Tower, actually not bad here. Play a Shade and another Shade, sacrifice them since they can't block anyways. Opponent sacrifices a Goblin. We draw another land, but lands are actually pretty good at this point. Play the Tower, we play a Shade, create a Bat, sacrifice the Shade, get back the Scrounger, exile one of the Shades and create two bats so we have three blockers again and they rip a land off the top we have to jump block here but really lucky that they didn't get some action there we draw a cauldron familiar play a land replay the shade swing for three sacrifice a scrounger and the shade opponent sacrifices a wily goblin we draw a card it's a gutter bones get the other gutter bones back from our graveyard create a bat and play both gutter bones pass the turn and our opponent rips another land just passes back we draw land as well but our lands actually do something here so play it get back the shade sacrifice it opponent has to sacrifice a creature we draw a cauldron familiar play it and do the trick again with the scrap heap scrounger setting up for lethal next turn and we can actually attack here Let's see what they have, but it really seems like we clutched out this game here. Jam Palm Incinerator, killing Gutter Bones. Goblin Ringleader getting all kinds of goblins, but too little too late. They attack, we make some jump blocks, and then, well, swing for lethal here. <laughs> that is GG. What a crazy start from our opponent, but we ground it out. Our opponent drew a lot of lands, we drew a lot of lands as well, but we actually had some value from them, so GG. Off to the next one. Whoa, that's a one lander, but if any deck can keep a one land hand, it's probably this one. So keep and play a swamp and play a gutter bones. Pass the turn. Opponent, Radiant Fountain passes the turn. We draw land, play Priest of Forgotten Gods, which is probably wrong, but I go over that later. Opponent, place a land, Guardian Idol, so it is colorless, so we gotta race them before we see an Ugin. Swing for two, play a Cauldron Familiar, play a Dread Wanderer, second both, and play a Skyclave Shade. Opponent plays a Void, plays a Hedron Archive into Mindstone, so yeah. Probably an Ugin coming here. Swing for five, play a Stitcher Supplier, play a Dread Wanderer, Sack some creatures, mill some cards, but no matter what we do here, yeah, we can play the Skyclave Shade, but no matter what we do here, if they have an Ugin. <sighs> yep, I just included this match because this is an awful matchup. You wouldn't expect it at first, but if they hit the Ugin turn four like they do here, you have zero chance here. Like, you can get back these creatures, but they can always minus the Ugin because all your creatures are at most two CMC, so no way to get back from this. I'm gonna fast forward here a bit since this deck has another problem, and that is uh, Khan. <laughs> since this gets Graftigger's Cage and this negates almost all of our graveyard shenanigans, so. <laughs> This matchup is horrible and yeah, we let them play it out just so they can have some fun, but that is definitely GG. Uh, just a quick recap to this game. We could have played a more aggressive curve, which might have won us the game. I did go for the Priest of the Forgotten Gods. We could have played the Skyclave Shades first. But uh, yeah, turn four Ugin is crazy hard to raise if they play two lands that give them two life each. So. Yeah, you're not gonna raise 24 life before turn 4 
and uh, you're obviously so much gonna lose against Ugin, which is okay. You don't have to win every matchup. This this deck is more like a synergy deck, and it's crazy fun to play. You win some, you lose some, and well, let's get into the next match. One more game, and this hand looks fantastic, and we're on the play. Wow, opponent completely ragdosed out with the sleeves and the avatar, but guess what? We can do the same playing mono black here. Bam! <laughs> okay, let's get into this game. Play a swamp, play a dread wanderer, pass the turn. Opponent shocks in a blood crypt, Thor sees not really good against us, and they take our Skyclave Shade. Well, okay, that seems like an oops to me. Replay the Skyclave Shade, swing for two. Opponent discovery, Milza Croxa draws a card. We swing for five, play a Priest of the Forgotten Gods, and a Gutter Bones. Pass the turn, probably running into an Anger of the Gods, which would make me really sad, but that's the game. Opponent plays a land and a flame sweep. I mean, that's better than Anger of the Gods, so fine with me. We play a Scrap Heap Scrounger and a Cauldron Familiar. Pass the turn. Opponent plays a Murderous Rider. Now we do have to keep the aggro up here, so Spark Harvest, the Murderous Rider. It shuffles back to the library and we swing for three, get back the Gutter Bones and pass the turn. Opponent plays another Rider and a tapped land. We draw a Witch's Oven, which is gonna be pretty good later in this game. Trade with the Murderous Rider, they gain two life, back up to seven. Play a Gutter Bones and get back the Scrap Heap Scrounger in our main phase, I guess. That's obviously a mistake. We should have done it at our opponent end step. Uh, yeah, just straight up misplay here. <laughs> just saying. Opponent plays a Bolas, that's pretty good. Kills our Scrap Heap Scrounger. And well, now we just have to take a turn off here to develop our late game. Play the Desecrated Tomb and swing at Bolas. Let's see what our opponent does here. Plays an Eldest Reborn, not particularly good against us, but it will get back the Bolas and plays a tapped land. We draw a Priest of the Forgotten Gods, play a Witch's Oven and the Priest, discard our other tomb and opponent just passes back. Okay, Dread Wanderer, play it. Sacrifice it to the oven, get back the cat, getting us the cat and a bad token. Sacrifice both creatures, opponent down to four. We get back a gutter bones, getting us a bat. Play the gutter bones and play the cauldron familiar and get flame swept again because never play around it. <laughs> but at least our creatures aren't exiled. Opponent gets back the Nikol Bolas, pluses it. We have to exile a land and disperses our Desecrated Tomb. That is unfortunate, but our opponent down to three and we have the Cat Oven combo, so probably gonna grind it out here. We draw a Skyclave Shade, play it and pass the turn. Opponent plays a land, plus his Bolas, we exile another land. Escapes a Croxa, we have nothing to discard here. Plays a Royal Science, okay. Draws a card, discards a card, end of turn. We sacrifice the Shade get our cauldron familiar. We draw a land, that's good, so we can get back the shade. Play it, pass the turn. Opponent pumps up the Croxa, pretty good with first strike and trample, so no need to block here. Down to seven. And Ritual of Sud, we sacrifice the shade, get a food token. Opponent pluses the bowlers, back down to one land, but yep, play Thought Erasure for the surveilling. Get the cauldron familiar back, draw a land, play the land. And opponent scoops it up, what a grind fest. And that is exactly what the deck is supposed to do. Get some aggro going in the early game and then grind it out with the cat oven and our recursive critters. Perfect showcase here and that is a GG. And with that, that's the end of this video. Uh, I said I address uh, the future of this channel at the end here, so well, I'm not sure actually, like as I said, um, making these videos takes up insane amounts of time and uh, since I need a new job, I am not sure what to do. I'll probably just make an update video once I'm done with my thesis. So uh, be sure to, and 
this seems like a scam here, but subscribe and ring the bell so you get notified when I upload this, since the YouTube algorithm will probably forget about me after this month. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess please do this. Uh, I promise I'll upload again since I want to find a way to make this channel work since this this was honestly a crazy time. I had so much fun and uh, making content just it's just something I want to do. So subscribe to the channel, more to come, wish me luck for my thesis and thank you, truly thank you for everybody watching and I'll see you in the next one.